has its ups and downs. Turn your oh, no. oh, oh, no. oh, no. to an ugly frown. Seems that when I fix one thing, another one comes, clouding up my vision. But I can feel the sun. I believe that I can do this. I know that I can win. Just as long as I have his love within. I believe that I can make it. I can make it through the night. I believe that I can walk on with my head held high. I believe that I am special in every way. But in order to have my victory, I gotta believe. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We come to you once again from First Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church here in the city of Gainesville, Florida. Come to thank God for the opportunity as well as the privilege to be able to deliver the word of God to you once more and again. Realizing it's not by our power or our authority for we have none, but it's by his grace and his mercy we allow us to be able to see a brand new day. We thank him for the opportunity to be able to be used by him for such an occasion as this. We welcome you to broadcast you 
who are broadcasting with us or watching us through broadcast or whatever means means you're watching us. We thank God for your for your being here and thank God for the privilege as well, the opportunity to glorify him once more and again, to share a word of God to you from what he has blessed us with as we have went through this entire week, knowing that God still is in control of everything as we always see. He still sits high and he looks low. And we trust in him and we believe that he will work everything out for our good. We always want to be able to just let you know that we consider it a privilege as well as an honor to be able to be coming to your home on your mobile devices, whatever way you so desire to see us. We does not we do not take that lightly. We realize that you can be watching some other place or being some other broadcast watching it, but you take time for us and we honor you and we thank God for you and we will always be prayerful for you and appreciating your allowing us to be in your presence. Not going to hold you very long. We have a word from God to be able to share with you. And we just pray God bless this word as he always do. And we pray that you have an ear to hear and a heart to receive. But before we go into our word, let us have a word of prayer as we always like to do. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we bless you because you will have been such a blessing in our life. Thank you for allowing us to be able to stand one more time to be able to go through a new day and to be able to be a part of this new day which you have blessed us with. We thank you for your love, kindness, and we thank you for your tender mercy. We thank you for always making a way when it seems like there is no way, opening a door that seems like it's been shut, and Lord, also shutting a door that needs not to be opened again in our life. We thank you for our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer, Jesus, who is the Christ, the one who gave his life so that we can be able to have everlasting life. And Lord Jesus, we will never take for granted the, the sacrifice that you made for us, dear God. For Lord, you who was without sin became the sin sacrifice of the world. And we thank you for that. We thank you for the power and the presence of he, the Holy Spirit, that lives inside of every true believer, leading us and guiding us and directing us in the righteous things of God. And we welcome you right now, Holy Spirit, to come into this sanctuary, to come into this place so that we can be able, Lord, be led by your spirit, Lord, into the truthness of your word. So we can be able, Lord, live better, act better, and also treat each other better. Now, Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. You are my strength and hallelujah, you are my redeemer. This I pray in your son, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This morning we're going to be looking, amen, there in the book of Revelation, the very last book in the New Testament. Revelation, the very last book in the Bible itself. And we're going to be looking, if you don't mind, please, ma'am, and please, sir, in, verse, in chapter 22, chapter 22 of Revelation, the 22nd chapter of the book of Revelation. And then we will begin our reading at verse number 18. Revelation 22 and 18, and it reads, for I testify to every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Verse 20 goes on and said, he which testify these things, saith, Surely I come quick. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Verse 21, our last verse says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen and amen. I want to use for a topic this morning, if you don't mind, my brothers and sisters. We want to use for a topic, amen, the book that really matters, the book that really matters. Praise his holy name. This weekend, my brothers and sisters, known as, amen, we all are familiar with it, it's known as Super Bowl weekend. Yeah, it's a time, it's a one of the great pastimes of the uh, this sport called football. It's the grand finale of all the work that's been done all through, through, the, through the season for these players who been out there and uh, put up with all the practicing and the, the things that needed to be done to be able to reach this epitome moment of the Super Bowl. It's a time when people all over the world, hallelujah, focus their attention for the next two or three hours 
to watch two teams which have earned the privilege to play in the biggest game of the year. Now I understand whether you're a, a dedicated fan or an occasional friend, fan or even a one day viewer of the game. You can't help but get caught up in all the hoopla and all the excitement that this event brings. Oh yes, it does. The game, the pre-game, the post-game, the commercials, the halftime show demands our attention. And I'm sure social media will play a part in it as well. People, I'm sure my brothers and sisters will be texting, Instagramming, and of course, FaceTiming on social media. Social media will become a value, a vital part, amen, of has become a vital part of our life. Uh, uh, it has invaded our life, social media have, and it, and it allowed us to, 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 there's some people that just can't do without it, amen. It's become essential, it's become such a part of their life that before they can even roll out of bed, the first thing they do is reach for their phone to see how many views they got, how many texts they may receive, how many Instagram, uh, amen, uh, uh, notices they have received, whatever the case, whatever the situation may be. I can't help but understand, I wonder back on Wendy's, this founder, the founder of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, when he and three other Harvard University students, when they launched this social network, they launched it in the year of 2004, when they launched it, they, have, they had no idea where it would take them. I'm sure they were surprised of, of how it fast it caught on. For it said that within 24 hours, Facebook of Facebook's launching, amen, it had over 1,500 customers. 1,500 customers less than 24 hours. Harvard students were the very first customers followed by other colleges across the country. Today, today, Facebook has become an obsession. We are social, we are social beings and we crave social interaction. Facebook users like to connect with family and friends, post their selfies to see how many likes that they can get. Whether you are a faithful user or sometime user, or no use at all. Facebook is here to stay. But there's another here to stay as well, church. It's the book of life. There's no app for the book of life, There's, but there is an app for instructions on how to get your name in the book of life. That book is called, Hallelujah, the Bible. So this morning, this morning, I would like for us to compare these two books, if you don't mind. Let's take a look at the similarity, and let's take a look at the differences between Facebook and the Book of Life. When you and I compare these both books, one thing that stand out is both books are free. Yes, both are free. Free, that's one of the greatest words in every language in the world. Everybody, everybody likes free. There's no charge to sign up for Facebook. And there's no charge to get your name in the Book of Life. Facebook and the Book of Life are both free because someone else paid the price for your enrollment. With Facebook, it's the advertisers. With the Book of Life, it is the blood of our Lord and Savior Christ. Amen, amen. Hey, that's amen, but understand church, it's free, but it's not without a cost, hallelujah. That's what the Facebook users are finding out, they're finding out it, it's free, but there's still a cost that's attached to it. What they thought was a private page, accessible only to their friends, a place where their data would be secure, they're now seeing pop-up ads. Did it remind them or mirror them, amen, of the, the private searches, the searches that they make in private, amen. And those are ads exposed, those ads that pop up, they expose a lot about the searches that you make on Facebook. 
that, uh, for example, that bathroom that you may have brought your mother for Christmas. Oh yeah, that, that was okay, that was okay. But the pop-up ads remind you about a sale at Victoria's Secret. <laughs> and guess what? The secret is out. It's no more secret, amen. That search for a movie night may be okay. But the search for a private weekend, weekend away from your booty, you don't want nobody else to know about it. That might be telling just too much Facebook. That pop-up ad that sometimes reveals things about what's going on in our personal and our private life that we don't need everybody to know about. Amen. Facebook may be free, but Facebook can kick you out. If you don't want to follow the rules, you'll find yourself like locked out of your account and locked into Facebook jail, and you'll lose all your friends. Somebody know about it this morning, amen. But free, but, but free is not the same in the book of life. Help me, Holy Ghost. Once your name is in there, you're in there to stay, amen. Nothing you can do would cause you to lose your place. Enrollment is as easy as saying three magic words. I'm sorry. I am sorry. That's all the keeper of the book of life needs to know. He doesn't need to know your address. Amen. Uh, he doesn't need to know your social security number, your Gmail address, your age or your phone number. Amen. Jesus just needs to know that you are sorry for your sins. Hallelujah. And once you repent and sincerely sorry for your sins, you're in the book of life to stay. You can mess up and fess up again and again, but you will remain in good standings in the book of life because we all, we all have fallen short of the glory of God. And because we have received Jesus as our Savior, and sometimes when we fall, when we don't be able, when we don't be able to live up to the way that we ought to live up, we can confess our wrong to God, and we still, we still have our land, our name written in this great book called the Book of Life. Hallelujah. Facebook and the Book of Life, both are free. But let me also share something with you in our comparison of both of them. Facebook and the Book of Life both provide access to a new life. Can I help you? Look at this. Facebook has become a much, uh, become a must in a lot of people's life. They seem like they just got to have it. Through Facebook, users connect with those who matter to them. It's how we stay on top of events and happenings and the lives of others that they care about. But it's also, amen, a way people can paint a better picture of themselves to the world. Let me help you if you don't mind. You know what I mean. Facebookers spend hours posting this perfect selfie. They become addicted to freeze frame. I guess the old saying is true in today's time that a picture is worth a thousand words. But I wonder, my brother and my sister, can a freeze frame photo cover up what's really going on in the inside of you? Hallelujah. Can that perfect smile be a phony smile? Trying to hide the hurt that's within. Can that perfect hair have a mixed up and confused mind underneath it? Can that right mixed up light in the picture be an attempt to hide the darkness of despair one may be feeling? Oftentimes, hallelujah, the self is not who we really are, but who we would like to be. Yes, the self is, is not really who we are, but it's just a, 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 a imaginal print out of who we would like to be. Amen. It covers up the way we hide our pain. It covers up the way that we hide our loneliness, our disappointment. It covers up our struggle. In other words, it's not really real. Hallelujah. I don't know a whole lot about the ins and outs of Facebook, about how important it is in people's life. But I do know the Book of Life is important also. It is a connection with those who want to be a part of the family of God is our connection to the afterlife. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And Jesus does not need a selfie to see us. He really knows, he already knows 
us from the inside out. Hallelujah. He knows what tempts us. He knows what disappoints us. And he knows what gets us upset and unravels, unravels us. He alone is able to make our inside match our outside. God, hallelujah, he offers Jesus and gives us a peace that surpasses understanding, all understanding. David says in Psalm 143 and 9, he said, Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Oh, hallelujah, church. Understand there's no need to hide from all that life is throwing at us. All we need to do is to hide in him. Amen. We can do whatever we try to do in our life for ourselves, but we're just incapable of just doing just enough. But we can't do everything. That's why we need Jesus in our life. We can't carry the load that this life place upon us. That's why we need Jesus. Hallelujah. We can't take the burdens and the ups and downs with life bring. We can't take the complications. We can't take the perplexed situations. We can't take the things that come to our doorstep that we don't know how to be able to do anything with. But we got a Savior they can do more with us and our situation and our circumstance than we can ever do. Amen. People reach for Facebook, but let me assure you there is a book that's greater than Facebook. From Genesis all the way down to Revelation, they tell about the creation of the world. They tell us about also about a Savior that came to save the world. And it tells us all about a Savior who's coming back for those who are no longer in the world. And my advice to you is to be able to get your life right with Jesus so you can go back when he comes home to receive you. Yeah, Facebook is free. And he's also Facebook, amen. And also the Bible provides a way for a new life. But also my brothers finally, uh, Facebook and the Book of Life both have consequences. With Facebook, there's a price for accepting this free invitation. Uh, once you start posting your information on the internet, help me Holy Spirit, there are consequences that come with it. Your identity can be stolen and you can lose your livelihood. You can get too friendly with your friends list and learn things about them that you wish you would not have known. Or they learn things about you that you didn't care for them to know. Oh, you can waste hours on a meaningless post that does nothing but annoy your friends and even might make them angry. You can get disconnected. You can disconnect. You can sign off. You can say sorry not or goodbye to the entire Facebook experience and you will lose nothing. Oh, but let me tell you about this book of life. Hallelujah. Oh, but not so in the book of life. There's a heavy price to pay for turning down the free invitation to the book of life. You can block God, but your blocking him will come at a cost. It will come with a risk. You can set aside what John is telling us in his book of Revelation. You can set aside the warning that John is giving that he received from Jesus when it said there in verse number 19, and if any man should take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God should take away his part out of the book of life. Oh yeah, you can know that if you want to, but I'm here to tell you that every day God is allowing all of us to have our name placed in this wonderful book. Hallelujah. Uh, my request to you, my plea to you this morning is please don't turn it down. Please don't turn it down. But if you turn it down, your chance to be in, the, in God's book of life, if you turn it down, to be a part of God's family, John has warned us that God will take you apart out of the book of life. Oh, but let me share this with you, church. Don't worry, my brothers and sisters. Don't worry, son of man. Don't worry, son of woman. Don't fret. Oh, because registration 
for the book of life is still open. You can sign up, hallelujah, today, and you'll receive the same benefits that the rest of us receive when we sign up some years ago. God doesn't have favorites. He doesn't have preferred friends. There's no one to, to try to, there's no need to try to tempt him or impress him. There's no limit to what God can and will do for those who confess Christ and put their trust in him. Hallelujah. No matter how ugly, how ugly your sins, he won't unfriend you. No matter how many, you, how many times you've fallen, God will still pick you back up. No matter how many times you've given up, God won't let you give up on him. For he knew your situation before it even became a situation in your life. And he's already made preparations for you to get your name wrote in this book of life. And in this book, you won't be, you have to doctor up a selfie. For God already knows who you are. And he's going to turn that sinner person into a saint of the most high God. All you have to do is make Christ your friend. I like what the psalm writer says. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. I'm so glad we got Jesus and Jesus is our friend. But I'm even more glad to have him to be our Savior and our Lord. He saved us even from myself because in all our effort to do right, we kept doing wrong. But oh, thank God you don't hear me this morning. I say, oh, thank God for the righteousness of Jesus. His righteousness was poured out on yonder's Calvary cross. When he died a sinner death, when he became the righteous one, when he who is the righteous one allowed his blood to be shed on us who was unrighteous, and all we had to do is come as we are. I don't know about you, but I can't fix myself up. Couldn't fix myself up then. Couldn't fix myself up now. Even when I make mistakes, all I do is let me know how much I still need Jesus in my life. I'm not going to let the devil make me feel just because I make some mistakes, just because I make some error, that I'm still not a child of God. I'm God's child. He got claimed claims on me and he got claims on you that's why he tell us to come just as we are with all the luggage of depression all the struggles that we're facing all the uncertainties that's in our mind just bring them to Jesus because you are a child of him if you accept him your name is already written in the book of life and not only amen is he our savior but he is also our Lord he wants to be recognized as being our Lord, Lord of our circumstance, Lord of our problems, Lord of our sickness, Lord of our despair, but most important, Lord of our life. When you allow him to be your Lord, that means you will follow him wherever he leads you. That means that you will do his will. That means that you will give up your desire and allow yourself to be attached to the will of God. He got to be your Lord so he can be your savior. If he's savior, then you ought to be willing to give him your life. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that he is my friend. I'm so glad that he is my Lord. And I'm so glad that he is my savior. Because of that, my name, your name, our name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. And he all right, I tell you, that's the book, church, that really matters. It's all right if you want to look at Facebook. It's all right if you want to be able to give your information out to each his own. Do whatever you desire to do. But when it comes down to the book that really matters, it is the book of God. It is the book hey, that Jesus paid a price. He who was the word came down in the word. He who was the word came down in flesh and became a living word. And he lived 
because even right now in my heart, every day of my life, I'm going to stick with the book that really matters, I tell you. The book that really matters is the one I read each day. That can strengthen me, that encourage me, that build you up when you're down. It's the book that really matters. But you got to stick with it. There's so many things out there trying to draw our attention away from this word, this word of God. But the word, his word promised it will never return back to him more. It will do just what God sent it out to do. And it will change lives, situations, and circumstances. But you got to be willing to accept it. The book that really matters. The Word of God. The Word of God. That's what really matters. Father God, we bless your name. We thank you for this privilege and this opportunity to be able to come to you. To be able to share your word to your people, the book. The book that can change lives and turn situations around in our lives. They can make us better and not better. To give us strength to hold on, the power to endure. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the word coming flesh and dwelling with me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for how we can read about how you can transform a sinner into a saint. How you can heal and deliver and set free. How you can be able to give us a new way of living. Open up some dark, open up some closed eyes. Be able to be able to make a fresh heart out of stony heart. These are the things and so many more that you've done. Not only in my life, but so many more people life. And I pray, dear God, that we continue to hold on to this strong word, this word, this word, this word. That is blessed from generation down to generations. We thank you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. We stand to give the invitation to discipleship. Asking that you come and allow Jesus into your heart. Super Bowl Sunday is a good place to remember that's when you gave your life to the Lord. Super Sunday, not so much about the Super Bowl, but every Sunday. It's a super Sunday. Every day is a super day. Because it's the day that the Lord has made. And He's allowed you to be a part of it. And the reason He's allowed you to be a part of it is because He's waiting for that opportunity for you to come and allow Him to be the Savior of your life. Not just on Super Sunday, but for every day. Every day. He has so showed me his super acts and his marvelous ways and his endless love. That's what our God has provided for us through Jesus Christ. A supernatural love that the world can give him. But only Jesus can give him. I pray that you receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. I pray that you give him an opportunity that you give him a chance. And I pray that you continue to allow him to be able to do the things in your life. You know what he can do. Don't give up, don't give up, don't give out. Trust God, he's going to make it way. He's making a way. And only you and I can be able to be receivers of this. Wonderful way that he blessed us to be able to receive. It's the only way we can receive it is through by Jesus. I pray that you continue to stay safe and stay healthy. This is our prayer. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest you in the Bible with us now forevermore. Amen.
As long as I have his love 